All right, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Tin Pail TV. Uh, this is only my second video. Um, I'd actually thought about doing uh, more of my own kind of personal backstory, but like kind of, I don't want to be kind of sitting making hundreds of videos, multiple videos, just all about me. Um, obviously I'll do them later on, but um. I just would like to just do different stuff, like just depending on what comes into my head that day or um, what I feel like talking about or whatever. So uh, today I want to talk about a guy that I know from prison. Um, <clears throat> his name's Porky. Uh, Porky was a lifer. Um, where did I meet him? I met him in... Shorts Prison in 2006, um, we had both been assigned to, so in prison when you're going, if you're trying to re get released or whatever, they'll tell you, you need to do X, Y and Z because it'll look good for you on your pro or what moving in an open jail or whatever, so we got um, assessed to go on this program it's like therapy whatever you want to call it just try to explain it for people who don't know the system so it's like group work like there's like 10 people sitting in a class talking about their offending and the psychological kind of shit behind it and all that so we were assessed to go on the violence prevention program um it's a six month course um quite intense uh was a, there was a psychologist on it, in fact there was two psychologists, a senior psychologist and a junior um, and a prison officer who were delivering it, right? So that was where I first met him and he'd actually just came out the digger um, I don't know what he was in the digger for at that point in time but he was always in the digger um, <clears throat> I was in a different part of shops from him um, I had went to Care House which is like it's um, it's like a kind of, it, it's not there anymore, obviously, but it was like, if you were waiting to move to an open prison to get home leaves and all that kind of shit, this was where you had to be in shots before you went to an open prison. So, like, they left your doors open at night, but obviously you're still kind of locked in the, the section. It's just like a, a hallway. Imagine, like, you lived in a block, a housing block, a kind of close, a, a tower block, but... Instead of your doors all being locked at night, you can still walk about the landings like that, um, playing cards all night or that shit. Um, so <coughs> <coughs> he got put into the NIC, which is was back then was the National Induction Centre. Now he was like maybe ten, at least ten year, fifteen year into a life sentence. So I think they put him in there because it was like a less kind of kind of sh stringent day than the other kind of parts, like, because they were just wanting to placate him, you know what I mean? Because the guy has, like, a track record for violence, which is kind of... Back then, it was probably no so uncommon, but now, I would say, like, probably get one of the worst, like, you've seen, you know what I mean? Um, just the shit he's racked up, man, is just crazy. So I thought that I would kind of do a wee video on him because no long after I got out, um, so I got in 2019, right, and he was actually in, he was in, um, I got released from Kilmarnock Prison and he was in Kilmarnock Prison when I left. And no long before I'd left, I had heard that, <laughs> He'd slit a guy's throat, um, and it wasn't. When I say slit a guy's throat, sometimes, like I've seen people who say, "Oh, so and so's throat got cut," but then you see them, and it's just like a wee kind of, it's like a nick, like a scratch. But this guy's throat was actual <coughs> sliced open, um, and the guy who had done it to. The jail, the, the, when the ambulance came to get him to take him to the hospital, they hadn't even got out the jail yet <coughs> before, <coughs> sorry man, uh, 
they were they had to give him blood transfusion because he lost that much blood, no. Um, I know the guy. I know the guy well. Is that he done it to as well? Um, so I was like, fucking hell, not I mean. Um, so after I go out, I'm sitting reading the paper, and um, this was about twenty twenty one, start of twenty twenty one. Um, seen that he's charged with murdering somebody in jail, murdered a guy. Strangled him, tied him up in a cell and strangled him. No, um, the apparently the papers, the way it came across in the papers, because obviously I don't have any contact with post care or anybody like that, so I couldn't actually ask him what happened or anything. But apparently, he's meant to, I said, to the, the screws or whoever. The wee guy thinks I'm a daft, eh, cause I'm old. Now, Porky's only 52, so... But I do get what he's meaning, because... Porky's been in jail over 30 years now, right? 1991, 1992, so I'm like 10... 9, 10 year old back then. Um, and he's been in all that time. And... In Glen Oco, a lot of the way these jails are now... With the exception of shots, which is just all big sentences, right? There's no guys coming in now about three months later kind of shit. These other jails are just guys coming in and they're doing shorter sentences and they've just been in maybe a year, eight months, whatever, and they're maybe coming in and they don't they don't really know the lay of the land and they're judging people on appearances as well. Porky's quite short. He's maybe a bit up to there in me. Um, so I'm five foot ten. He's about maybe five four or something like that. Um, he's no particularly broad, but he's definitely no, he's no skinny. Do you know what I mean? He's just kind of proportional. Um, but he dies like. Personalities there, but he's just his eyes are deep, you know what I mean? Um, so <laughs> what's the matter happened is this week, this this boy's in his 20s, he was in his 20s, maybe I think he was maybe 29, maybe 30 or something, and he strangled him with a, with a cord or a line, as we call it, um, and <laughs> went and talked the screws. I remember reading it and thinking, fuck me, man, like, no, even just the fact that he'd done that, like, some, imagine, got, like, for those of you don't know, see a murder to happen in the Scottish jail is actually pretty, it's, it's no, <coughs> like a slashing or a beating or a fight, it happens, every, that shit happens every fucking other day, but for a murder to happen, right, is just like that's half that's kinda half the charts, man. That's once in a generation kinda hang in a Scottish jail. And um I just remember thinking, like, what the fuck has he done, man? And also remember thinking about like, cause obviously the victim's forties on the article and all that kind of shit. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, What was that boy doing, man? Like I know, I get all this, I don't, obviously I don't know, I think he's maybe said something to Porky and Porky's just been like, fuck this man, know what I mean? Because I know, like, kind of, like, like a lot of people in jail, like, he does, he does take drugs and all that, and I know, like, substances kind of, kind of, dist- no, even just substances, being in jail distorts your thinking, because you're reading, <coughs> you're reading into shit, like, six different ways to interpret something, like, you could be, like you you could just be sitting at a table talking to somebody, and there's a guy doing laps, walking, running the whatever, and you start laughing. He may think you're laughing at him, and he he might talk. He's selling to, he's laughing at me, and then before you know it, it's like he's t- he's his self talks just pff, went mental. It's like you need to do something. I've done it myself, but no, no to that extent, walking by, I think people are laughing at me, but with other things, right, and you just go, 
you need to make a you need to set an example, no make one. I mean set one like so that obviously people be like <coughs> it doesn't stop you getting attacked or confronted, it just makes people know that you're not gonna stand there and do you know what I mean? Just put your horns up and say fucking whatever, know what I mean? But um I just I remember thinking that that wee guy, he's just fucking, he had a lib date, he was getting out, and fucking, he's, he's been murdered in jail, know what I mean, and it's just fucking, <coughs> it says, I think it says something about the way your jails are the now, like, when I, I first went to jail when I was 15, right, in 1997, First time I'd have went into Bologna, but I got took to Long Regend. Um, I was only in Bologna reception, then I was in there for like f- fucking four hours or something. Walked in a dog box, which is just like a cupboard, right? Um, walked in there, and then took to Long Regend, which was as a schoolboy. So basically, Long Regend is basically, imagine Pullman, but it's remands, it's all remands, it's shut down now. Um, took there, but... <laughs> you'd never heard of anything like somebody getting murdered either. There was riots, there was stabbing, slashing, scaldings, maybe the odd sc- screw getting punched or something, but, or, or maybe <laughs> screws doing the punching. But you never heard of somebody getting murdered. Like, that, that that's, obviously it's happened in Scotland, right? A um, couple of high profile cases, but, and they've heard of, like, people getting weighed in, but never somebody actually taking a life, know what I mean? And I remember I think, like, that's fucking, that's madness. And it's just maybe says something about the fact that, the, see, like, these programmes, like, so these prisoner programmes we're on, right? I'll have, like, the... See back then, right? See today, something like the violence prevention program. You couldn't just go and say you were in for murder. You that didn't automatically qualify you to go in that that program. You had to have three previous convictions or more for violence. You couldn't just go on it, right? So that group I was on, there was like me, Porky. There was a guy. There was another guy who I'll do a video about total maniac creepy shit robert Moni's name was no probably none of have heard of him well some of you have but this guy was like pff, serial killer material wouldn't they, come, wouldn't they confront you with him know what i mean but <coughs> anyway so later on they must have ran out of people way three previous convictions are mere for violence so they were just giving it to the guy who was just done with assault done with murder done his first time man and all that kind of shit now they people on the like the people that are it's a cycle it's a pattern of behavior and i'm just like how the fuck are all these people getting flung on these courses it's to justify the funding i think um do you know what I mean? Um, bums own seats, all this kind of shit. Um, don't get me wrong. It didn't do me any good fucking going on it. Because I still didn't get pro. <coughs> still didn't get home leaves. Done a degree. Done. <laughs> Took me about three years before I even got a report. Um, but that's another story. No greeting about it now. But it seemed like Porky had just given up like, getting out because... It would go to, it would get these what we call the tap end, right? So your care house was the tap end back then. So you had to pass through there before you go to like the open prison where you get let out for the weekend and all that shit, right? You had to go through care house. But then they changed it and it was either had to go to Greenock. But Greenock was just for life or so. I think he went up there and he got returned. He got sent back to shops or whatever the fuck it was for like caught getting fully up, smoking weed, whatever the fuck he was doing. Um, and I think that, I think maybe he just, he did that much setback, disappointments, fuck knows what, that he was just, he was, it's like he was keen up on life. And then, <clears throat> when you're just sitting in the closed jails, the, ma- the right, closed jails is just another way of saying maximum security jails, right? So, 
he, uh, it's like he's just sitting getting mad with it all the time and he's just sitting with all the, the malign influences and focusing on the daily fucking humdrum who's saying what who's fucking do you know what I mean just the, the negativity do you know what I mean like it's hard to stay away from all that shit like I think I could only do it to a certain to, to a great to a great extent but there's all you can only you can only sit and read so many books and sit in so many classrooms you know what I mean it's just there's always some way a fucking somebody trying to ruin your fucking day or whatever do you know what I mean but um and the funny thing is, I know these were the only things that Porky had done, right? I remember he'd actually fucking, I think he'd done this before I even met him. Um, He'd stabbed the guy who's now, who was the governor of Kilmarnock Jail when I was in Kilmarnock Jail. Um, Porky had actually stabbed him, but I think he was a prison guard at the time, he was a screw at the time, he was not like a governor. Um, Stabbed him in the fucking stomach, know what I mean? <laughs> He took two hostages in Glen Oco as well, a nurse and a, a nurse and a screw. Um, fucking, so that's just all the shit that I can <laughs> think of off the top of my head <coughs> that this guy's, this guy's done, you know what I mean? And it's like when there's no hope for people, do you know what I mean? I'm not saying the guy could have changed, but it, to, to speak to him, he was not the kind of... There's guys in jail you just know to avoid, and it's not necessarily through fear or through fucking being scared or whatever. It's just through... They just give you a vibe, right? They just... You don't get a second chance to make a first impression, you know what I mean? They just give you this vibe, man. But Porky, even though he'd done all this shit, he was one of the, like, I remember being, I was in the same work sheds as him and all that, and we'd be walking around Dane Laps, he would try to just kill time, just caught Dane Laps, just fucking walking around circles, like, the way you do an exercise, you're like a fucking hamster wheel, you know what I mean? And, like, you can have an intelligent conversation and all that, no daft by any fucking stretch. Um, but, <laughs> I remember one time, right, this is fucking hilarious, man. No, I know funny as jail memories I've got, right? So when I went to Kilmarnock jail, I got I got kicked out of Old Moss, right? Uh was doing the set the digger for a week and then get moved to Kilmarnock, which I was kinda bothered about it because Low Moss is closer to me for visits, right? Kilmarnock's fucking <laughs> nose close, right? So I was disappointed for that reason but some of the memories I have for that Kilmarnock, I get I get out for Kilmarnock, right? And it, it was it was it was quite there was a lot of crazy funny things, right? <coughs> when I was there, there was more funny stuff than than no so funny stuff. Um, so I get the first time ever having a fucking job in the jail that didn't that was not education related, right? was um, the hot plate, so serving dinners, <laughs> serving the dinners, right? <coughs> and fucking... So, there was me, Porky, and this other boy for Paisley, right? But the boy for Paisley was getting out. So my big pal Jerry, man, for the gobbles, fucking, what a, what a laugh this guy is, man. I need to get him on here, he's fucking just some some storyteller have you in stitches and half the time he, he, he just the way he goes on about shit so but he's a clean freak he's cleaning everything four times a day and all that shit right but obviously he's got a weak immune system so <coughs> he, he kind of maybe it's more to do with that than being fucking OCD or whatever so I'm still in fucking it was Jerry's first day in the hot plate right in fucking <laughs> <coughs> him and Porky were serving the food, but I was just, I had my back to them scrubbing all the fucking trays, right? I just, because I'm, I'm, I hated dealing with cunts because it'd be like, oh, got to give me, 
got to not let my egg touch my chips and all that. I can't fucking deal with that, mate. Just get it on the plate. It's your job to deal with when it's on the fucking plate. It's no my job, you know what I mean? Obviously, I've served and all that, but fucking, that was like the reason I couldn't do it, right? So anyway, uh, him and Jerry were serving the food, man, and then all the leftovers, right? So <laughs> Porky's emptying these big fucking deep, dip, these big metal trays, right? <coughs> A steaming hot food in a fucking carrier, no carrier bag, see it, now you get bin bags, right, well these were clear, no how if you've been in jail, it's all clear bags, right, but it's like the same size as bin bags, right, but they're thicker than bin bags, and Porky's emptying all this food into these bags, just try to get the fuck out this, try to get the fuck out the kitchen, right, out the pantry, and fucking, <laughs> He's pure sweating and all, so you can just tell he's choking to get the fuck, but I wasn't thinking nothing in it. And then, <laughs> by Jerry, right, <sighs> lifted the fucking bag up, tried to put it on top of the bar to wheel it out, and he just lifted it. See, as soon as he's went to sit it on top of the fucking bar, <laughs> all the foods bumped through the bag and went all the flare. I was fucking buckled, man. And Porky does that to him. <laughs> it's like the whole flares all apple crumble, fucking custard, rice, everything, right? Just a pure concoction, man. A fucking steamed shit. Then <laughs> Porky does that. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. I'm about to get cleaning shit or something, he said. And he didn't come back. He just left him to clean it. And Big Jerry gave me his room, man. He fucking cleaned it all. But <laughs> I couldn't, I was, I was stoning and washing. The, the, the fucking these metal trays in the sink and I just couldn't stop laughing see that way you're trying not to let any cunt hear you laugh but you're just killing yourself because it was his first day on the job I didn't want him to think <coughs> like know what I mean I'm fucking bamming him up or anything like that she's my pal know what I mean but fucking oh I couldn't stop laughing at that man but fucking that was a uh, probably the only funny story I've got yeah the guy, but just wanted to do that kind of wee story because a lot of, a lot of the documentaries you not know, I see on Scottish jails, right? I know England, whatever, any other country is different, right? Every country is different, but Scotland you don't hear our murders and all that kind of shit. And the documentaries that I see that are all on the YouTube and all about uh, the prison system, it's all. We Jimmy's excited about his mum coming to see him today. Da, 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 be happy to in the back run. It's quite, I think it's like, they're not showing you <laughs> the dark side, you know what I mean? And maybe that's because nobody will talk to you about it. I don't know. People would talk to you about it, but there's only, they would talk to you about it in kind of coded terms and all that. So, um, just fucking, it's not, it's not a nice place, you know what I mean? And I think, well, when I was in there, um, I think because obviously, even before I had my kid and that man, I was my 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 thinking was elsewhere. Trust me, just it was like I've had a brain transplant or something. Um, but see now that I'm out, and I'm reading about it for the paper rather than being fucking four doors down film and hearing that he's just strangled somebody. I'm sitting like, how the fuck did you get through that? How the fuck did you put up with that? Know what I mean? So they don't kind of. You don't think about it when you're there. I think you maybe just switch off in that, but it's not something that it's, it's it's just it's not something that I think I could go back to. Um, there's cert certain things in life I think you need to do no matter what. You know you need to just t roll the dice. But as far as consciously intending to go out and do something. No, because before I didn't take him, like, say back in the day, right, say Mr. X attacked me with a baseball bat, no, I was just that raging back then, just that angry about everything, that jail wouldn't even come into that, that, that thought sequence, it would just be, I need to get him and I need to batter him that bad that <coughs> next time he even hears my name, he'll have a fuck, he'll, he'll piss himself, he'll, whatever um it was all about the revenge the getting back it was it j jail didn't matter it, it, it had to be done and my thinking back then 
it had to be done. Jail didn't matter. I would take the chance, do you know what I mean? And, and a, lot, a lot of the times I got away, they didn't, well, I don't mean I got away like I got chased. I mean, it wasn't reported, it did, whatever, right? So, but there's only so much you can do before. It's like you go to a casino, you could be on a winning streak, but the house always fucking wins, doesn't it? So, and I see, and I, can I see, I'm seeing like, can I, it's not as bad as when I was a kid running here, but can I see, like, can I be pockets of, the same kind of behaviour and you're just kind of like, it's no something that I want my kid kind of <coughs> growing up running or getting involved in or whatever. So um, just hoping that people start kind of seeing that life or what it is, man. Do you know what I mean? I realise there's shit going on in people's lives and all that kind of stuff. Or they've not had the thinking skills, they've not been taught. Because like, my, my dad had never been in jail. Um, obviously I jumped about. My dad was my dad grew up in the gobbles, right? But and mama, but um, my dad used to jump about gang fighting and had been stabbed and all that kind of shit. But he never sat and told me, "Don't do this shit," <coughs> or that kind of shit. I remember him sitting me and my brother down one day, like no sitting is doing like that, but sitting at his feet and he was telling us all these fucking war stories about fighting with the Brigton lands up the Glasgow Green and me and my brother are just sitting there like, whoa, that sounds cool as fuck because he's telling it in a way that makes it sound that way, do you know what I mean? And to me that's quite... I don't know if irresponsible is the right word to use, but it's not that it's something you want to be fucking telling a five and a six-year-old. That's the ages we were. I mean, so it's a cultural thing. This just didn't start with me or my dad or his fucking whatever. It's like this. He's been going on for fucking <laughs> since the Big Bang, and it's not just in Glasgow. It's fucking all over the place, man. Do you know what I mean? It's what it's what an old lifer I heard call it clan mentality. Clan mentality. It's like this scheme fights with that scheme. What for? Cause we're on this side of the road and you're on that side of the road. But it's it's no other, it's no other places where it's your money, tough, or that kind of shit. Do you know what I mean? It's fucking it's what it's what I heard that copper. This this copper woman that I met, sound woman, um she went with recreational violence she called it. So she like fucking just fighting for fighting sake, man, do you know what I mean? And there's always somebody who gets caught out, man. Like, there's some wee guy out here the now who is about to get down that path and it's not going to end fucking well. Um, so, I like to think that something can be done about it, you know what I mean? And maybe if they listen to shit like this, like fucking no glamorising shit, the horror stories, do you know what I mean? No try to, like, fucking freak them out, traumatise them, but just try to tell them, like, listen, man, harder than you have tried to lead that life and turned away, so watch what you're fucking doing, innit? So, cheers for listening, man. My way to fucking comb my hair.